so what we have here is a Acer board that we're actually doing on site at the uh, computer shop. And as you can tell, uh, we've already prepped this whole entire board uh, and went through everything to diagnose it as a uh, BGA issue. But what we see here is this is an ATI uh, Northbridge and then we have a Southbridge chipset here. So what we'll have to do is heat one side of the board, reflow this first chipset, and then move to the back side and heat the uh, secondary chipset and go from that to actually see if we repaired it. But, um, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do and we'll go from there to see what happens. But uh, we'll set it up pretty much it's the same exact uh, heat set uh, and distance and um, exposure time as the DV9000 and the uh, later DV7, DV4 series uh, reflow for an ATI as it is with an NVIDIA. So we'll go from there and do that and see what we can do to fix it. Okay, just like every other uh, repair, you have to make sure that your distance is uh, as close as you can get it towards the chipset. So what we're doing here even with the ATIs, uh, you have to make sure that your distance is relative, uh, relatively the same as you would with the NVIDIA's. But another thing that's important is you have to make sure that you are uh, running your preheater on this uh, board because what happens is the preheater causes the board to stay uh, in a flat formation instead of bowing up because what happens is when you heat this, it's going to draw the copper and cause it to flex. And by it flexing, it's going to cause the board to actually crack the uh, silicone here. So it's always important to uh, preheat this, and then um, you know we'll go from there to uh, actually heating, running the lamp on the chipset, and um, heating it up. But it's always, like I said, it's important to run the preheater to make sure everything goes perfectly fine. So now we're running the exposures on it. Um, just make sure that you run your exposures for anywhere from two to eight minutes. Uh, no need to run your exposures any longer than that. And make sure that your distance is, you know, relatively the same. The most important part is the distance because if you don't keep your distance uh, proper, what happens is you will actually overexpose your chipset and cause the top portion to either shatter or you'll cause the capacitors to overheat and blow out. Now what we're seeing here off to the side here as this heats up is a little bit of uh, smoke coming off of it and that smoke is actually perfectly fine because what that's doing is it's cleaning the uh, compound that we use to uh, clean the lamp off, it's actually uh, doing what it needs to do to cure it off. It's just burning it off or heat setting it off or whatever you want to call that. So we'll let this finish doing what it's doing and then you have to take it off the preheater and lay it down and let it cool for anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. Now with these uh, not having the uh, glass tabletop like we had before uh, and being on site, what we do is we keep it on the rail kit and what that does is it keeps this chipset from the bottom side and the other chipsets here on the top side. So it keeps this one from getting compressed and this one from getting compressed if you were to take this and flip it over and just throw it on top of the tabletop. It's best to keep it on your rail kit and just let it uh, heat set and cure uh, sitting on top of here. And what it'll do is your board will straighten out, everything will be fine, and then you can go into your actual diagnostics. But we're going to let it sit for probably 20, 30 minutes and then we'll uh, set it up to do what we need to do. Now, on this machine, we're going to have to use both the Matrix and the Arctic Silver. Uh, one on the processor and then the other on the chipset since it's not electrically conductive. But we'll do all that here in a minute to uh, set everything up and get it finalized. 
All right, so now we've got it uh, reflowed. Everything's done. What we're going to do is plug it in, and then we're going to turn it on and see what happens. So we get our lights, and boom, there we go. We have our screen. So we know our diagnostics that our uh, video turned out, and uh, what we're going to do from this is take and put our heat sink compound on it and set everything up then test it again and make sure everything's good but uh, most likely this is a done machine so we're gonna call it complete uh, and that's that